Today we're talking about the new refines for update 8.9 in Fire Emblem Heroes. In part 1, we're going over the Choo Choo Legend 6 units, Brave Violet, Seleph, Tiki, and Krom. If you're unfamiliar, Suayo units basically cut in front of the refine line after 2 years. For part 2, we're going to discuss New Year's Keaton, Legendary Atrium, and Legendary Female Violet. Wait a second. To start us off is Brave Female Violet. She saw a new chaise and decided she needed 2 new refines to show him how it's done. Brave Violet is a colorless flying mage with high speed. She has a unique special called Divine Pulse, which boosts damage based on speed and has a secondary effect for 75% unpierceable damage reduction after this special triggers. In addition, Violet gets extra true damage for her next attack equal to 20% speed. The general idea of Violet is to abuse speed preempt. If she outspeeds against ranged foes, Violet triggers Divine Pulse first, so she gets that 75% DR for the incoming counter. Let's see what the refine is added. Inner Wellspring is a 14 might tome. Every turn, if Violet is near an ally, she gets the no follow up status and a times pulse effect. She has accelerated specials, so these two effects pre charge Divine Pulse. If Violet initiates or is near an ally, she gains plus 5 stats, reduces damage from the first attacks with an S by 20% speed, and then if her special trigger, then gain minus 1's cooldown after combat. The only change to the base weapon is that Violet adds flat DR equal to 20% speed. Obviously, that's to pair with Divine Pulse's 75% DR. For the refine, Violet gains Kanto 1. If above 25% HP, she gets another plus 5 stats, and then more stats equal to 10% speed at start of combat. Violet would deal plus 7 true damage on hit, she gains no guard, and then she now has DR piercing specials. Fairly straightforward stuff. Brave Violet is further leaning into Vine Pulse, adding flat DR and DR piercing. The speed preamp advantage cheese is deadlier now, but this Violet is super screwed by Scow. If Divine Pulse isn't triggered, she gets no 75% DR either, and Pulse Smog is a new Scow option for daggers. Seems like Shez came prepared. Now if Violet does proc Divine Pulse, she has no follow up to double slower foes, and with no guard, it recharges Divine Pulse if she gets hit back. Since it's on one cooldown, Violet's follow up attack will be another Divine Pulse. If it's the player phase, Violet can also counter retreat, which is nice. It also gives her some utility as a flyer. For the most part, Brave Violet's speed preempt game plan hasn't changed. Violet must outspeed, and this vantage only works against ranged foes. Divine Pulse gets full DR piercing, and with no follow up, Violet can double, which leads to another Divine Pulse guaranteed thanks to no guard. This is assuming Violet gets hit back. She has extra stats and flat TR to go with the 75% damage reduction. For skills, attack and speed catch is still fine. You could use Unity, technically Mastery can give plus 11 stats, and Verge of Death could prevent debuffs, although the Demon's Rest penalty is a little counterintuitive. For the C slot, hold is fine, but you could upgrade to Crux. For better combat, Violet can use attack and speed oath 4 for field boss and the plus 3 in combat. Her refine does scale with speed. For sacred seals, you can double up on catch, go at attack and speed solo, or maybe something like squad ace for HP. For non-vantage playstyles, Violet could rock Flared Sparrow. She has Kanto 1 to retreat behind the fire, and more true damage is nice. Technically, Resonance could work if Scow stops Divine Pulse, but it also lowers Violet's HP, and she's not going to have the 75% DR anyway. You can also do a Cultist's Strike here. Desperation 4 works fine with the no follow-up status, and against Scow, but should proc Divine Pulse on her follow-up attack. If you want extra stats, Daily Miasma is a solid player phase option. For a new skill, Air Orders is coming with the new banner. It's basically honed flyers with 2 speed buffing range, and it works on the user. It still grants the regular warp status, and now it adds the charge status. This means ranged flyers like Violet can get 3 movement, at least in a line. Overall, Brave Female Violet can still run her vantage niche. Divine Pulse gets a good power up thanks to the DR piercing, but it's very vulnerable to scout. Ranged Flyers have a lot more skills than 2 years ago, but most of these are player phase focused. If you have support, I would say Bullet could maybe swap to higher damage specials for pure nuking. However, Flyers still don't have many quantum skills to pair with her times Paul's weapon. Next up is Brave Seluf. Like his dad, Seluf is a sword cap that can get 4 movement. He's also decently fast and has C skill grants a no follow up status with attack and speed field boss. Holy Tearfing did not receive any changes, it has Kanto 2 and Slaying. If Sela for the foe moves spaces, he gains plus 5 stats and true damage based on the foe's defense stat. This scaling is based on the number of spaces moved, so Sela can get true damage equal to 40% of the foe's defense. In addition, if Sela starts with more than 25% HP, he has a miracle effect in combat. Fairly strong weapon at base. Further refine, if above 25% HP, Seleph gets more stats equal to 5, plus the number of foes within 3 rows or 3 columns, centered on unit, times 2. If there are 3 enemies in the range, Seleph can get plus 11 extra stats. On top of this, he gets 50% DR piercing on all hits, he heals 7 HP after combat, they then gave Seleph Excel's flat DR effects. 
For every space moved by the initiator, Seleph gets flat, uh, 3 flat DR. Moving 4 spaces gives him 12 flat DR max, and if a special is triggered, then Seleph doubles that flat DR amount. If you want to chain Miracle, Seleph now has his own healing effect after combat. To no surprise, Seleph is still encouraged to move a lot, and he has flat DR with a lot of extra stats if he fights enemies in that 3 row 3 column range. For extra killing power, 50% DR piercing is very nice, and like before, Seleph has some tank busting power since his true damage scales with enemy defense. All in all, some good effects. In terms of playstyle, Seleph needs to start to turn near allies. Harry to Light gives plus 1 movement, plus 6 attack speed, and no follow up. Seleph is then free to recklessly charge in since he has Miracle. He has flat DR and extra stats now to make it tougher to take him out, and he also heals 7 HP after fighting. You can try to pair this with Mystic Boost or other healing sources to get back above 25% HP. This would let Seleph chain Miracle fight to fight. Just watch out for Fatal Smoke 4. For damage, Seleph now has 50% DR piercing. He already could get a ton of true damage, and now we have skills like Assassin's Strike. If Seleph were to initiate from 4 spaces away, that's 60% defense as true damage per hit, which is kinda wild. For other skills, Seleph has Attack and Speed Clash since his weapon uses the Clash condition. Clash 4 is still good since it neutralizes Attack and Speed debuffs. Seleph wants to outspeed with no follow-up because if he only gets hit once, then he literally cannot get one shot unless the foe counters Miracle. If you rather stack flat DR, Excel will pair with the new Refine. If Seleph moves 4 spaces, that's 24 flat damage reduction with 2 Excel effects. If you want extra defense, you can add percent DR. Guard 4, Brash Assault 4 can be fun, or Seleph can go with Potent. He does have decent damage, even if that third Potent hit would be reduced. For some other skills, Surge Sparrow can let Seleph heal back up. He could proc Luna on a follow-up. But Seleph has no other cooldown perks besides Heavy Blade. You could try Gale for strats, but watch out for Seleph's self-healing now. This encounter can work as long as the enemy moves one space to attack. Hair to Light gives two statuses, so you could try Prime 4 with extra support. In conclusion, Brave Seleph is still fairly annoying. 4 movement Miracle Calf can cause some trouble, and Seleph now has more defensive power with his flat DR and stats. I don't think it's the best idea, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone gave Seleph Brave Alphonse's skills just because. He doesn't have to be the one using it, but it should be pretty clear what Breath the Life 4 and a Miracle Weapon could potentially do. Brave Tiki is a green infantry dragon, and I believe she was the first to bring in the Scal effect. I th also think she was the second unit to get the instant cooldown effect. Tiki's Refine doesn't really expand upon these, but she does get some good upgrades. Remote Breath doesn't get any new base effects. It's effective against dragons and has slang. If Tiki's within 3 spaces of an ally, she gets plus 5 stats, a free follow up, and if using an offensive special, Tiki gets minus 1 instant cooldown before her first attack. She then has the Scal effect. If the foe uses an offensive special and Tiki has 5 or more res than them, then inflict plus 1 cooldown before the foe's first attack. Brave Tiki messes with cooldown on both sides of the game. She can fire off two cooldown specials at any time thanks to her instant cooldown effect, and this will only be countered by enemy scale effects. If you want to stack scale for Tiki, we now have dragon skills to do so. For the refine, Tiki gets distant counter. If above 25% HP, she gets plus 5 stats, and then extra stats equal to 10% of her res at start of combat. Tiki gets flat DR based on 20% resistance, and she will have 50% DR piercing on every hit. This is another pretty straightforward refine, DR piercing capabilities and stats are nice. The devs save everyone a skill slot by just giving Tiki this encounter. She then has flat DR based on resistance. Brave Tiki's B skill, New Divinity, is basically Dragon Wall 40% DR, so she now has percent DR plus flat DR. This skill also inflicts minus 7 attack and res and prevents one fall up attack. Unfortunately, New Divinity feels replaceable. If you don't think percent DR is good, then there's a fairly obvious replacement. If you want to keep it, the minus 7 res does help with scow, and the fall prevention can stop a lot of recent speedy units since very few actually bothered the bring no follow up with them. It's a nice check. Tiki's base kit is attack and res finish 4 and defense and res menace, both help with scow's res check, and finish is even better now that Tiki gets this encounter for free. You could use the finish sacred seals, Tiki can initiate and fire off glimmer and moonbow, both now at 50% DR piercing. For a more defensive build, Dragon's Roar offers unpierceable percent DR. I know Scal kind of messes with its activation condition, but it can be insurance if one Scal effect wasn't enough. Additionally, Tiki can charge it in time for a counterattack. If you're in the Temple Sacred Seal, no guard ensures Dragon's Roar will charge on the counter. If you have Emblem Mart's Ring, Tiki can treat Dragon's Roar like a regular 2 cone special. If you're struggling with warping, Tiki can replace New Divinity with High Dragon Wall. It actually grants more res for comparisons, but you lose the minus 7 attack debuff and fall prevention. 
In exchange, High Dragon Wall gives Tiki ranged warp bubble. Maybe ignore the fact that the most recent unit can bypass this. There are other percent DR beast skills out there, such as Counter Roar and Bulwark 4. If you don't believe in percent DR at all, then it's once again Lagoo's friend time. Tiki can get up to 40% resistance as flat DR, and her instant cooldown can help charge Glacies if the foe brings guard. Her 50% DR piercing does go to waste, but if Tiki can or can't special for whatever reason, then it's better than nothing. Sadly, you can't run Dragon's War here. If you want unpierceable percent DR with Lagoo's friend for a pure tank setup, then Tiki can run Aegis, or you could do Pavis plus Emma Mike's Ring. If you just want to stop any special, Tiki can stack Scow. We have the A skill version and even Res Wave D. Pair with Veil for quadruple Scow. Sounds ridiculous, but we got a free to play bow that literally grants minus 3 instant cooldown, so not that crazy. For other skills, tier 4 boost skills can add guard with plus 5 HP, bonus double can be fun if you want a stat stack, maybe stronghold for flat defense and res. Instead of menace, you could run oath 4 or pledge for self buffing. Breath of Life 4 is pretty wild and Endless Tempest does work on dragons if you have player phase aspirations. If you got Deimos, Tiki can stack instant Kuna with Creation's Pulse, or you could go with another Times Pulse type skill for different specials. For Sacred Seals, Dragon's Wrath can offer some percent DR and damage, Hardy Baron can let Tiki fight back, and Squad Ace for more HP is fine as always. If you do swap off new Divinity, Tiki can run in a Toon skill, Nelsie Disrupt Echo is pretty nice with Distant Count. Overall, Brave Tiki's three new effects are 50% DR piercing, flat DR, and then Distant Counter. Tiki's niche has been spread around since her release, but it also means she can stack effects like Scowl. There have been a few new dragon additions like Dragon's Roar. If you want to support Tiki, Ice Tribe Felicia on the upcoming banner actually offers some interesting perks, such as being able to neutralize dragon effectiveness. Our last hero 6 refine goes to Brave Krom. He's a speedy Lance Cavalier, and his H Fate Changed Assist skill is a reposition plus extraction for Krom. If the ally Krom moves has bonuses, Krom will gain the same bonuses. Basically, if you have a status, Krom can copy it for himself and then move again. From his refine, Gerdreful has the same base effects. Krom has army effectiveness and slang. If he initiates combat or is near an ally, Krom gets plus 5 stats and then another plus 2 for every active status on him. Krom gets 40% DR for first attacks with an S, and if he has any bonus, then Krom gets breath type cooldown. The only change is that Krom's 40% damage reduction now works on Brave Hits. Otherwise, this is the same base effect. Krom has uncapped stat bonus scaling with any statuses on him, good or bad. He's going to hit armor units hard and makes up for lack of cavalry cooldown skills with slaying and breath type cooldown. Further refine, if a movement assist is used by Krom or targets him, he gains a 50% DR piercing status and a lull status for one turn. If above 25% HP, Krom gains plus 5 stats, deals true damage for every positive stats active on him times 4, and then he heals 7 HP after combat. Like our other units, Krom can also get DR piercing, and he neutralizes enemy field buffs. If he has 4 positive statuses, Krom can get up to 16 true damage per hit. Using a fate change will give him 2. For the most part, Krom wants to continue barring statuses from his friends. Status stacking gives him more stats, but you do need to be careful of a couple anti-status units. For general playstyle, Brave Krom is mainly an initiator because he wants to use a fate change to borrow statuses, and he can use the extraction to go fight. His base kit has Search Sparrow to use with Gerdrafo's cooldown, and that provides a lot of healing. Krom then has Spinning Defense Down Trace for Kanto. You can upgrade to the Tier 4 version for Kanto 2. Infantry Speed Tactic is there to give his allies no follow-up. Krom really wants no follow-up himself, so he can go borrow it after. Being a team player is nice, but there are other selfish methods to get no follow-up now. Odd Speed Wave 4 gives anyone the plus 6 to, uh, speed buff, but only Krom gets no follow-up if he outspeeds. Generally, Krom does want status effects though, because that translates directly into extra stats, and now true damage. He also really wants to be part of a movement assist, since 50% tier piercing is a little strong, and low is also a good effect. Krom's effectiveness grows with other strong statuses. Self is a good teammate because no follow up and plus one movement are both pretty good. For other skills, Krom can use the Flow B skills for no follow up. Flow Guard 4 is very good as it's a way to get Scow. If you pair it with Odd Defense Wave 4, Krom can combo Guard, Tempo, and Scow, which is pretty neat. The Tempo effect can also work with Gertrude Bread type cooldown. That can help for things like Gale Force, although Krom now heals if you were planning to use Fury Recoil damage. For Killing Power, Flow Desperation can let Krom double tap if he outspeeds. With his cooldown perks, he can proc Luna or No Quarter on that second hit. There are quite a lot of other viable skills here. 
Flared Sparrow is fine. Assassin Strikes True Damage can stack with Debra fine. If you need Kanto, Alarm Sea Skulls now give that option, plus it's a status. Insight is also good because its plus 3 stat boost via the Incited status is another plus 2 from Gerdrafol. If you want defense, Excel can give flat DR. Potent is a percent DR option. Krom can utilize Attack and Speed Link 4 because, like dual young Robin and Krom, he gets the extra action. Clash 4 is good to ignore deals, and Catch 4 works too if you want some mixed phase stat boosters. Since Krom wants statuses, Prime 4 for Distant Counter should be easily activated. While Krom wants to super buff up with as many status effects as you can get, he is susceptible to losing them all from certain counters. At his core though, Krom still gets around the battlefield quickly with the extra action. It's always a strong ability to have, and Krom has a lot of skills to utilize to mix and match with the various statuses you can find on the team. If you were to pair with the two Brave Robins, Brave Krom can get Kanta 1 and Rally Spectrum. Both are excellent effects, plus all three units make for a fairly fun team in general. That's going to be it for part 1 of the update 8.9 refines. Let me know your thoughts and have fun with the new CL6 refines. I wouldn't say any of these are super unique. These are new units, so their baseline power is already much higher than the usual monthly refine. Everyone got DR piercing though, which is not super surprising. All around, it's a perfectly fine batch. Next up in part 2, we'll talk about Nearest Keaton, Legendary Atrium, and then Legendary Female Pilot. Stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, hope you have enough to find do, and I will see you in the next video.